Yeah, this matchup right here is about to feel like a finals because only one team can continue to move forward. And the first one coming to the stage is rocking that yellow and black for New York. crew but this time we take everything For this may be the hottest game of the day. New York looking to make the run along with Thieves. Truthfully, this could go the distance, but Tan, what do you think? It's a really hard game to predict. Of course, we have seen hot form from the LA Thieves here today. And the same from the Subliners, but we didn't see it yesterday. A cold start for the Subliners mentioned they need to step up here against the Thieves, but they are our major one champions. We know what they have in the locker. Can they bring it here against the LA side? Thing is, they're going to need to. Both these teams have shown a little bit of weakness, but also a lot of strength in this tournament. And I truthfully don't know the way it's going to go. For New York, a little bit of S&D teething issues at Major 2 could be their downfall. Yeah, three in a row that they have now lost here at Major 2. They need to change that round pretty quickly. But I agree with some of the sentiments from the desk. You know, Thieves, we've had a look at some of the records in terms of their search and destroy. Two and six on LSE. It doesn't tell the full story. But of course, across the entire map set, it's so hard to call. New York will be feeling confident heading into map number one. But it is really not an easy one to predict. We're breaking down the stats. We're trying to figure out which way this one goes. And those stats on your screen might tell you a story here. 
but well matched in the right places are the New York Subliners and the LA Thieves. For me, specific matchups I'm looking at, I'm looking at Hydra against Envoy. We're talking about the routes, we're talking about rotational wins. The gunfights on the rotations are going to come in from these two boys, Subliners and Thieves. Let's get into it with Hotel Hardpoint. This feels like there's so much on the line for these two teams. Going out this early in the tournament obviously will be a massive disappointment considering the stock and the team they're held into, but both teams are already going to be playing for a little bit of position around P1. On the side of LA Thieves, they'll get a little bit of the initial time, but can they get that rotation around to P2? Set up there already for New York Subline as LA Thieves. P2 has been a big struggle for them. The majority of the points they are losing up against the other teams is happening over towards that hill. Can they manage to lock down some time here when we do get over? Good gunfight win for Draza. Kenny Envoy finding the kills at the right time. The location over towards P2 is currently controlled by the LA Thieves. You can see they've set up for this wonderfully scrap time and the rotation. The push for New York. Priester trying to see if Envoy challenge him just enough as the rest of the team swarm in. But keep an eye, I think it's Kenny's going to be the player who could play spoiler. The rest of New York will pile through. Kenny gets one, but they've been broken. They need somebody else to spawn at the back, just like that. Envoy is there. The rest of LA Thieves now towards the car park. Can they find a break on through? Envoy, slow peak, only one left. Kenny still spawning towards the back, and that's fine for New York. They can lock it down here. They're quite happy for the Thieves to start spawning there. And it rests on a very, very thin wire. Realistically, New York starting to get pushed out slowly, but surely the rest of them coming through. Sky, he's got to look every single direction. Not going to work out for him as Envoy comes sliding in. Kids are going to go straight to the front as well. Finds Kenny! No! Not getting in the out of it. Envoy shuts him down. And they may well lose that rotation in the end, but the break percentage for the side of the LA Thieves, nobody better in the league at it. Rotations, not very good. Breaks, very good. First, first example of that from both these two teams. And now it's this race over towards Kitchen and something to keep an eye on, Lando, and study pointing it out before, Priester bringing out the Vaznev around this and the next hill is something that could be influential for the subliners. It is, of course, both two teams fighting over it here. There's two from each side. Okay, looking for the better spawn, but obviously better position from subliners being inside. It is never an easy break. So much to fight through, and they aren't winning the kills either. Kenny will find one, but it's still going to be the subliners in charge. Just no map control coming in from the side of the LA Thieves there. Couldn't get there, and it's the head of the snake being cut off by the side of the subliners. Locking in some good time here after Thieves picked up some time over towards P2, which is notoriously not great for them, but a lot of time here for the subliners. That's now three dead LA Thieves floundering away over towards P4 momentarily. They will have another look at it here. Good shots from Draza. That might entice them. They're looking for, and that's got caught out as well, but LA Thieves are just having no luck around this hill. They cannot break in, they cannot break through. The rotation may be massive, though. Envoy going to be looking for Hydra, but of course Hydra is there in advance. And they have the position. Priest are coming to reinforce as well as Hydra continues to do his thing. And that's just going to be a big fight throughout, as I mentioned. Hydra and Envoy going up against each other on these rotations. Right now, Hydra's winning it over towards P4. 12 and 6 from the French Free Nolan himself. And locking down Spa as best as he can. Now, this is a difficult position for LA Thieves to be in. Octane could play spoiler, but he gets good. Hydra continuing to lock this one down. Envoy finds one at the front, but it's a good hole from Subliners so far. I love that from Kidman. Backs down, doesn't even need to, but Draza will eventually take down Hydra. The Thieves squeeze is coming. They're they are looking for the numbers. The nades are raining through. They're trying to get in this one. Draza makes another big kill, and they have got it. Only Skies can play spoiler. Do they know he's here? They do, Great and they break. make him irrelevant. Great break. Skies being there doesn't really do anything for the squad. If everybody else dies, bullets are being sprayed in, and the rest of the team are going to start spawning here towards the backside. It's Hydra set up with a pinch, but it's for 15 seconds. So if you're subliners, you've got to think about the rotation over towards the next hill, but try and play spoiler where you can. And this will be a big gunfight. Kismet is here. Look at the spawns coming in for the side of Thieves, though. With subliners towards the back car park. Kismet is all alone. Envoy, big gunfight win. Rotation belonging to the Thieves. And they need this. It's felt like a game that goes back and forth. They could come down to just about anything. Priest already in. And they found the way into the corridor as well. Hydra getting another kill, and the Thieves are already feeling the pressure. They got here first, but no kills in the kill feed. Kenny finds one and somehow stays alive and gets out with his life. But is this going to be enough? Octane gets his trade, looks to go back in here with the Thieves, and they are putting the pressure on Octane. Finds his way in a restaurant. Really nice hold so far. LA Thieves, as mentioned, their break percentage is there, but the hold and rotational typically hasn't looked that great, but it's not looked too bad yet. 
Subliners will find a breakthrough with around 30 seconds to play with, but it's a big break coming in from Jewel. Big shots coming through from Kenny as well. And that's a clean break once again. The number one break team on Hotel Hardpoint showing what they're made of here, but heading over towards Glass. It's a big fight towards the back. And Voight going up against Skies. He's looking for it. He's going to find Hydra out in the open. Makes that kill look a little bit more difficult than he might have done. Kids are also fighting at the same time, but realistically now the pressure is just flying onto him. And New York continuing to hold the thieves at bay. And honestly, I think Sky's actually just spun on Kenny towards Back Kitchen. If any of you called that in the minimap, it looked quite disgusting. And that's going to allow Subliners to keep a hold of those spawns, keep a hold of this rotation. Big gunfights going the way of Subliners when they need them to. Hydra's able to find two inside the bedroom. He's just going to be such a nuisance. Skies with another good hold from Subliners so far. And these are the points they want. This is going to put them in a commanding position. 170 will be touched before we go through the next set of rotations. And Hydra continuing to be a problem at all times. You see, they've already been a little bit forced off, but the kills keep flying in for subliners. And I think that's the thieves' problem. They just cannot find anything at the moment, but let's find out. Our Major 1 champions are currently in the lead. Let's find out how they are in the comms. Yeah, okay. Okay. I'm just laying down. Can you, you, you watch my couches? Okay. Uh, you watch my couches? Hold top cat. Hold top cat. Yeah, hold top cat. 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 Hold I have your cat. I have your dubs. I have your dubs. Okay. Much more connected. Yeah, dubs, dubs, dubs. He's out. Chairs, chairs, the P4. Uh, no, bad. Chairs, the back. P2. Yo, there's two, two chairs. Watch out, watch out. 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 Yo, we have a lead. Slow down. Yeah, watch out. Nice, bro. Get those mini. Get those mini. I need a spawn left, bro. Nice, nice. Yo, let's push it. Leave this time. I'm watching over you guys. You guys can go. He's in the car. Lobby, 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 done. Nice. for one. Look for one. There's one more. We're missing Sam. There's one more. Yo, Right he pushed the car. He's he's pushed pushed the car. He got me the hole. Yeah, in the back. Just the last one. Fuck the hill. Fuck kills. I spawned the hill. I'm not Lobby, heady weak. Pop up. He's left. Love it. Yeah, he went to the chairs. the chairs. I'm pretty sure. Whole side of time. Whole side of time weak. Whole wall. Keep it down. Sick. Nice. Whole wall. 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 Whole well, we saw Priester flying, but Octane fires back with everything they have, and he's made this hill theirs. Incredible play from the Thieves. And you hear the comms immediately. They're like, where's Sam? Where's Sam? They know Octane is somewhere. Towards the back, finds three or four all on his own. And that's why we're seeing Thieves find themselves back into this game. Rotation is well and truly going to belong to the subliners, but that is a big hold. Thieves now within 30. A little bit more of a touching distance here, but as mentioned, rotation ongoing. Kismet is here. New York subliners are locking down kitchen. And this is the problem for the thieves. They are behind and the subliners are clawing their way to victory. They need to find the kills. They need to find the trades. They found a few now. Draza and Octane trying to squeeze the net. Kismet trying to hold them off, but they're already in kitchen. The reinforcements are here from both teams. And Envoy finds two. Priest to come through at the same time as well. Looking for it, finds one. Kenny sprays from kitchen. And he gets it as both teams start slugging it out for this rotation. But at the moment, I'm thinking Thieves with a hold here. That's a really good break. The pinch is set up that New York subliners will now have an opportunity to find. But it's Envoy, the hero of Kitchen, finds two inside the point and then the one on the pinch. Now he's on the rotation. The scrap time's going Thieves. And we're going to have a tight game heading over towards people. The Thieves are the number one breaking team and they have to do it again. They did it on the Kitchen. They now have to get across again. Envoy oh. looking for it, but shut down. A breath, a moment, a respite for New York. Thieves in the lead, but no rotation for them yet. Octane in that position, heading over towards P2. Got the job done, but couldn't quite find the kills there. Kismet backing on down. Got a little bit of cover as Kenny will be traded. This is a good hold from Subliners so far. Kills starting to be traded. Keep an eye on the spawns. And for Subliners, he's still spawning towards the back. It's a heartbreak here for Thieves. It is Octane trying to do his best. Kenny gets a kill at the same time. Kenny finds a second, and now the Thieves are swinging into action. Only one left. Only the Phenom. 
as he tries desperately to rebuff this push coming through. Neither team now able to win it on this hill. And the spawns towards the back for subliners may well help them play with the strap time. But it's all about this rotation. Spawn towards engine here for Kismet. Big gunfights about to go on down on the rotation. Is it the dog that get it or is it the human turret just trying to lock the lines down? Here come New York Draza all alone at the moment. Everybody hold on to your seats. It's about to get rocky in restaurant. Octane trying to fly through with the subliners with the first hold. They have the first kills. Kismet has pushed out. This is the last chance for Thieves. They have to move. They have to find the trades. And they have a potential pinch set up here. New York are taking that time, but the kills are ticking over towards Thieves again. The pinch is somewhat perfect. Kismet now left alive. Both teams 15 away. Here we go. The New York are going to try and break in themselves. Kismet, the dog is in him. He's looking for Octane, but gunned. They've got two. They've got them out as well. It is coming down to the wire. The LA Thieves, one more chance. No idea why they're spawning. They're pushing over from Kitchen. Subline is still racking up points. The Thieves have got to go now. Kenny wins one in the middle. This is the chance. Envoy's in, Envoy's in. Kenny's in, oh, oh in. my Kenny's God! In two. And they found it. New York are not here. They do not have the numbers. They do not have the spawn. The points are ticking for Thieves. And oh my God! <laughs> is a way to kick off the last game of the day here at the Major. Back and forth, back and forth, break, rotation, hold. Absolute chaos. Over towards restaurant, we gotta see it again. And look, for me, it's mostly up to where teams are kind of spawned out. And if you look at the break that comes through from subliners from this point onwards, they'll find the break through, and they haven't got a clue where the LA Thieves are spawning. You can see Draza towards Kitchen, they get broken. Draza still towards the Kitchen side. They didn't know he spawned there originally. So now Thieves have got the time to set themselves up. New York know now, but then it's a little bit too late from Kenny in the middle, causing disruption. Then comes the break. Kenny with a big gunfight win in the middle. And then from there, it is just disaster zone if you're subliners. You gotta find a way back through. And that is all because draws are spawning towards the backside. And then Thieves make it work for them. The element of surprise is all they needed. What a game, number one. If you were watching that like we were, weren't entirely sure who was gonna win it. But every break that happened in restaurant, the tide shifted, but they went back and forth. And I'll be honest with you, after the first break, I thought they had it, and they got broken, then they broke again. And honestly, Thieves were really far behind <laughs> at one stage in that game. I think it was around, what, 50 or 60? They really brought it back well. And I want to give props to the call out that we've seen during the listening. Where is Octane? We're missing one. He finds three or four for a brilliant hold over towards P2, which gets Thieves back into the game. It gets them within touching distance. And from there, they do a fantastic job after Subline has had a good first half. It's a four point game to kick off the final series of the day. No better way to do it. What amount of more? Yeah, that's certainly something we're going to watch on replays over and over again. That amount of just breaks and holds. We'll tell you coming into this one statistically, Thieves have the best break percentage in the league. And these two really went to work. Just a hard point showcase for us. Yeah, and the thing is with the subliners, they are kind of over towards the top end of things in every single stat line when it comes down to hotel. There's nothing in particular that they do badly. There's nothing in particular that they do perfectly. They are just good at every single facet of hard point when it does come down to hotel. I mean, we got a good showing of that. Hydra put up the numbers we expected. Envoy kind of kept pace with them as much as he could, but it was surprisingly the ARs that got the job done for the side of Thieves. And the breaks from Kenny, he was always instrumental in some of these pinches that were being set up. And to get those call-outs, it, it's a, have the, the somewhat the wherewithal, if you are the thieves, to know your spawn in kitchen, you know that they don't know. They take their time, and they know it's such a close game. They know subliners are taking their way up to the win, but they take their time. They formulate the breaks so, so well. It's patient, it's timely. And when you find that break at that moment, it kills the game and subliners can't find a way back. There is something to be said about KD versus influential kills. I feel like Kenny may not have had the best KD that game, but some of the kills he found, some of the opportunities he made for his roster, got them the win. Yeah, so many influential moments from every single member of Thieves to find that map number one. And with the way that this series is laid out, they'll be very happy with that as well.
an LSC low search and destroy is what we'll see in map number two. Hotel is where we will go back to for control. And of course, if we need them, Embassy and Hotel in maps four and five. I think we might be seeing them, to be honest with you, uh, uh, Brycey, with how close map number one is. I expect that to be the theme all the way through this series. Yeah, it certainly wouldn't surprise me. The biggest issue I have at the moment, obviously, this event, Sutherland haven't looked so good in s and And going down 2-0, to zero, I feel like a reverse sweep is a lot of to ask this early on. But we are getting ahead of ourselves, of course. There is a lot to go here for this one, Tan. How are you feeling? I think they'll have some confidence, at least, looking at the Thieves' record when it does come down to Elisilo. But Thieves keep on picking it. And that is for good reason. They may well be 2-6 and six on it, but their round percentage is actually not so bad. Defense is where they are struggling. Attack, they look great. And Jay pointed out on the desk as well. First Bloods are something they can find quite well but converting them is the issue. If they can start converting these first bloods, it is a dangerous, dangerous prospect for the side of subliners. But what better map to bounce back on than one that your opposition are two and six on. So both teams will be feeling confident heading into El Asilo. I'm confident that it's going to be a banger, Bryce. It's a good start. It's a good start. It certainly is. Well, let's find out if this series continues in the same vein. Thieves and the subliners about to throw down on Elisilo s and We'll be jumping onto the attack with the LA Thieves to kick things off. But the truth is, adrenaline for both sides has to be absolutely pumping through their veins. Looking over towards this one. Second in overall first bloods for the side of LA Thieves. And yet their record, as mentioned, sits at two and six. Can they turn this around now? They have the foundations of a good S&D team on Elisilo but they need to make sure that the Bricks and Mona are following instead as well. And Boy heading over towards a fast-paced round seems to be where Thieves do thrive as this bomb goes down. You can already see they're going for a bit of map control here as well. They know the retake is going to be all on New York to get something going. Can Kismet be the man already to see Octane? And somehow Octane's up. No, never mind. Great, clears him out. Two versus four. New York already eliminating the numbers of Thieves. And that's unfortunate for Thieves to get the bomb down. You just need everybody to kind of stay alive. You've got to expect the flank. I was about to say it's still possibly doable, but it's just such a good retake from Subliners. That's a four flat dead. Absolutely no question from Subliners there. They find the pick on the flank and pick them apart. And for Subliners, this is a map that we haven't seen a huge deal of. I think we actually commentated over them online and we were wondering because when it does come down to the Subliners, when they get Hydra in positions inside, he can cause havoc. It wasn't necessarily him that lit that torch paper in that round. It was Octane falling towards the back. But nonetheless, a very good retake from the side of subliners. I'll be happy with the start considering map number one. Yeah, obviously, LA Thieves, they gave up a lot of interior map control. They were spreading out. They were ready to kind of rebuff the pressure from subliners. The issue being is they lost the first two gunfights. Octane got caught on that mount. And that was basically everything there. Realistically, Thieves didn't have a lot of room to maneuver. But the shoe is now on the other foot. New York will be looking to go 2-0 to zero up here, but can they find a way through already? Octane coming out a little bit of fire, and he's going to go down as Kismet finds the first, but he's traded back to a 3 versus 3. 3 versus 3, you're very right. Kismet inside the point, and Kenny will find another. Draws a fine skies, and all of a sudden, Kismet with the bomb, but no friends. Kenny answers back very, very quickly. It's a good defensive round winning, and considering some of the statistics we have coming into this, Thieves have struggled in at these defensive rounds. They answer one back after losing their attack be happy at that levels the playing field for them big gunfight win for Kenny evenly poised after two that was a very very fast round to be honest with you not a lot of breakdown just couldn't make it happen still all tied up in the search and destroy a lot of story left to be told this time though LA thieves bombed down last time but nothing came of it is it another fast plant Looking that way, but they're looking like Subliners are going to answer back with something fast of their own. Hydra lingering, but their dead silence has popped. There we go, Draza trying to make the play. He's already going all the way through. Keep an eye. Looking, where is everybody? Where are the people I need to take down? And the fact that he's there, he's in a really good position. If Thieves can hold, they're in a good spot. Now, dancing around the doorway. Kismet trying to see if he can get the advantage onto Octane here, and he does. The nade will take him out of it. The bomb is going to be down, but it is advantage to subliners in terms of numbers. They get that second trade as well. This is the same as the first round ton. Draza now left in one versus four. He wasn't in an awful position, but his teammates all dead. 
and when Draza is somewhere like that, he's got it cleared. He knows nobody from Subliners is in that area. That is a side of the map that then Draza can control and then go over to try and stop the defuse coming through. The rest of your team go down, just not enough time for Draza to be able to do anything there. Really nice retake again. The defuse are going to tighten up here. That's twice they've been able to get the bomb down, and it's twice they've been cleanly wiped by the Subliners. Yeah, maybe a little bit of a change for them. Adjustments will now be coming into these teams. They try to figure out what is a better break for us. It's all been defense so far. Here on Alex Celo. Let's see if New York can break that streak. Is this a change of pace? You can already see a player going out towards the field. If he can get into a good position here, he may call for the rotation ton. I'm thinking about it. Skies ever so late to the party. But it's about pick and move now for Subliners. We see so many quick rounds coming through towards that A side. That's not going to be the case this time. Priest there cut down. Now a three versus four. Not necessarily the best of positions here from Subliners either. They're going to make a decision. This is the pro biggest problem they have as they don't really have control inside. They've lost a second member now as well. They are going to want to make a pick before they make a move. But time and pressure is against them. Kenny just holding fire. It's going to see Kismet as Kismet wins the gunfight. Two versus three, it becomes a little bit more plausible. Defensive first bloods have been good for the side of Thebes, but closing these rounds out has been an issue. Can they tighten up here? Still three versus two in their favor. Envoy yet to really get himself involved, but he may well hit. Sound cues popping off all over the place. The gunfight going to come through against Kismet. There's the first one on the board for Envoy. And this should be a round over towards the LA Thieves bomb. Going down though from Skies. 1v3. Is there any miracle? Is there any magic? As LA Thieves move as a pack, the unit is stronger than the single. Can Skies pop and move though? He's given up control of the bomb site, which means he has to make himself vulnerable. Looking for it already, and down he goes. And that was the issue entirely. Thieves move together, not giving Skies any opportunity. Making it very difficult. No chance there for Skies with the way that things were set up. Over towards B. If you can stay around and find a gunfight early doors when one of them comes over to check, then maybe you have an opportunity. But trading defensive rounds on both teams so far. Nobody able to find the break over towards an attack just yet. But there has been signs. That's twice that the bombers went down for LA Thieves. I think only the ones from Subliners so far. So Thieves, they need to tie it up on the just holding everything down when they get this bomb down. You're inviting the pressure, but you can't win the gunny. So see if they can tighten up here. Another attacking round. It's been fast and frantic so far from them in these attacking rounds. And is it the same here, I wonder? Well, we'll have to find out. It looks like a very similar break. This time, though, Octane with the sniper. Nobody on his scope, unfortunately, for him. The key thing here for LA is yeah. if they go for the same tactic, they have to figure out a better way to stop the subliners swarming. It's always been the flank that set things up and running in here for the subliners. You can see the position is there, but Draza says, yeah, you can flank when I'm going to catch you doing it. Kismet will answer back. 3v3. Looking for a pretty fight. Another one. Draza gets it back, though. Down to a two versus two. All about positioning and patience now. 28 seconds left. The thieves have to hold. New York have to get in. Kismet is looking to try and make a play. We can already see Envoy moving around as well. Priest up and Draza also going for this one. Priest is going to be covering as well. And they get it just in time. Just in time. Kismet sticks it early. Well done, Crowd, for not giving that one away. Goes for the wall bang. Oh, rips his toes off. That is very, very close. I believe we may well be able to have another quick look at that before we head into the next round. We'll confirm, but that was very, very close. Good job from the LA Thieves. Draws it just about getting the job done, and he was the one that opened things up for the squad as well. Into the next round, three to two for Thieves now. Find themselves an attack in under the defense where both teams have got 100% record up until the previous round. Draz is making the move forward. We might see Danny popped here as well. Envoy coming under an awful lot of pressure though. They are looking for him in the middle and Kismet will get the first kill. Draz goes down. Can he get it back to a three versus three? Desperately needed for Thieves. Subliner will have to try and reevaluate their position here. They know already the bomb side is contested. At least they do have the bomb. At least it wasn't their bomb carrier who pushed in there and got taken down. Able to answer that back, the player from Draws. I came through like you called it, but not able to find anything. So dead silence, so somewhat wasted. 
Envoy still in a good position here, but who moves first? He wants to make the move, he will make the move. Skies will get taken down. Go to the trial as well, and Envoy can't quite find it. Priest dances back 2v2. Kenny's hunting, Kenny's looking for it. They wanted the trade, but down door two versus two. Who blinks first? Kenny pops the dead silence, looking for the players. They didn't see each other. And the information has been lost for these two teams. It's been long enough. 23 seconds though, the ones that have to move are the subliners. LA Thieves, you don't really need to do anything here, but just sit tight, hold on and wait. Kenny, in a wonderful position to do something about this, but it's gonna be the Rapier, you will see Hydra, and what's the play? Hydra's gone for the chow and he's got it! Now Octane left in a one versus two, bomb down, he's just enough time, but not able to get anything out of it! And the tiniest of margins make the difference. Hydra, full of confidence. Slams out the door and puts it to bed. Gets the second kill as well onto Octane. The playmaker. Big moment. Big, big moment. It felt like Thieves were in control and Subline is running out of time. But just about get the job done. So two defenses in a row from both squads and then an attack each as well. So hard to separate these two squads. Heading into the next round. It's got to be an annoyance for Thieves, that one. Kismet and Cole looking to get aggressive as off Thieves. And here we go. Kismet is in a position to play foil. Or he knows he's going to be calling this out as well. He knows he's going to be an awful lot of pressure, but they line up. He gets one. Draza managed to get it back as well, but that could have been disastrous as Hydra arrives. And now he's here on a three streak, cutting through Thieves' lines. Oh. And they find two more though, but the agent of Chaos himself is just around behind them. They know where he is, they have the info. But is that enough to stop Hydra? It's all onto the French Phenom. A one versus two. A game of such minute proportions. And he's sneaky and he's going to get the first one as well. Goes for the channel, but the knife is out. It's no good. And the entire crowd was waiting with bated breath. Hydra was next to them. Adrata probably did not expect to have an angry Frenchman running at him with a knife. I will be in panic mode, but Draza <laughs> at 9-3. and three. Icy as you like. We'll find the kill, and I, I actually love the play from Hydra, to be honest with you. This slow and steady, it goes against every single part of his being when it comes down to Call of Duty, but phenomenal from him. Finds the kill, stays on the flank, and tries to find the two. He wasn't far away, but draws her at 9-3, and three. Hydra at 7-4, and four, the standouts. But it is Thieves, with the advantage of back under the defensive side. They found trades in this area before. They called that one out, they've seen Kismet. How does that make both these two teams adjust? Already you can see a little bit of a backpedal from the Thieves. A little bit of a backpedal from them, I agree, but at the same time, subliners have very little map control. The only position they really have of any power right now is where Hydra is, but I presume the Vaz never in his hand, but Draza with the tact. Finds first blood, can Thieves convert it? It's been their biggest issue. Draza may be making a play here. Dead Silence is gonna go for him as well. The subliners looking for something, but Kenny's also gonna pop it. Gonna be plays coming through. Exactly how a Thieves gonna play this one. Someone is looking for it. Skies finds Octane. The map is open. But the thing is here for Thieves, the information that they are getting is that it's a push over towards B. Or at least that's how it feels. But here comes the streak ended from Draza. It's a first blood that is now turned into a three versus two. Subliners in the advantage. Kenny and Envoy, can they find the win? The angle's good enough. Kenny's not going to be able to get that one straight away, but Nade will bounce into the room. Nothing there though for them yet. Envoy trying to find a fight as well. He can't, but Envoy Nate. gets a Nade. Down to a two versus two. Sky is going to see them. They oh, are going to for them as well, but Kenny wins the gunfight and Hydra's alone. Another one for two for the Fred Phenom, and oh. down he goes. Envoy gunning, and LA Thieves make the clutch. And that is the biggest difference in rounds that we're going to see. A big gunfight for an Envoy. And honestly, it feels like he's the one that sets up the play for the squad throughout. Defuse coming through. 5-3 lead now for Thieves. They got it a little bit scary. They find the first blood. They're in a wonderful position. And Subliners kind of don't know where to go. They're waiting for Hydra to make a play down the field side. He isn't the one to make it. Thieves then start to force into the middle of the map, thinking that, well, okay, are they going towards A? Are they going towards B? They had no info. They start to get picked apart. But the clutch comes through. Hydra in the one versus two cannot find it. It's one round away from a two to zero lead here for the LA Thieves. Well, the attack could be everything. Subliners have to hold fast. 
And they've got to do it three rounds in a row. SD has been an issue for the Submariners this tournament. And it may continue to prove to be their weakness and their downfall. It's another first blood for Thieves. They're so good at finding them, and they have been able to convert them. This will be four S&Ds in a row if Subliners go on to lose this round. The one thing the Thieves must not do is let this man get in the way. If he can get a kill, if he can do something, Sky's already managed to find one of the home for He gets away and Hydra finds a second. That's going to be the issue to come for as well, but it will be traded out. Octane goes for him. Back down to another 2v2 in another round. Prince finds the first, though. It's a first, but that may well be fumbled, but it's a 1v1. Does Kelly see in the smallest of angles? Skies gets away. 35 seconds to go. And they're both now looking for each other. I think he's had the sound cue, and he has. Kenny tries to make the play, but unfortunately, the counterplay was already in, and he heard him. He turned, and he burned. And that's it. You can hear Skies already. He knows Kenny's coming. And the subliners stay alive in the search and destroy. Very, very tight towards the end. But a first blood given away from Thieves again. I think that's a couple now. They made some of them count. 5-4. Still the ones in the driving seat here. But can subliners tie things up? Send us to a round 11. The series would suit it so far. Now the nerves of both teams are going to be on edge. Isn't it? That'll be a stun check. But he doesn't get anything from it. And this is all information. This is all trickling into the minds of the players. Where are they? Where can I go? What do we do? Subliners. For the majority of the round, somewhat passive, but Hydra's actually just popped his dead silence. He's starting to make moves, trying to make the play for his team. He's going to get taken down by Envoy. Another first blood for Thieves. They're looking for the win here. Kizu is looking for Andraza as well. Andraza says, you know what? Discretion, better part of Valor. I am out. It is all on Subliners. They have lost another first blood, and Octane holds it down. Versus Skies. Backs up as well, but Kisma gets one back. Two versus three. New York will have to two versus four this. And they're so split up. Kisma falls. It's preset in the one versus three. No time, no bomb, no position. Maybe no hope. Deddy popped. Time to rock and roll, Priester. Time to give it everything you've got. Looking for this one, does have an opportunity here, gets away the first time, but the crossfire is in, the cut is held, and LA Thieves go up 2-0 in this series. The first bloods we talked about. Obvious from the stats that it's something that Thieves have worked on. They haven't been able to convert it a couple of times, they did not. But the majority of the time, they are finding the first bloods. Having a look over towards it, it was actually Kismet solely for the side of Subliners, finding five on their side and on the other five for the Thieves, but they make them count that little bit more. But the fact that they are converting the majority helps them out. Previously, it was only 54% of the time they could get them converted. That's that line now out of the window, much better <laughs> from the Thieves. And they find themselves in a wonderful position at 2-0. They certainly do. They've just got to get this one over the line, over the hump of that third map. What is going to happen? Who knows? I mean, we've seen a lot of game five this major already, but these two teams, we know the majority of the maps are going to be close. Next two maps do look good for the subliners. And that is giving me hope that a map number five could very well and truly yeah. still be on the way. The Thieves will find themselves in a fantastic position, but this one is definitely not done yet. No, it certainly isn't. Join us for map number three and potentially more after this break. We'll see you right after this.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Call of Duty League Major 2. We are in Boston and the crowd is enjoying this one ton. This sweet Caroline during the break as well. You love to see it. Crowd getting involved, enjoying their time here on a cold night in Boston. But a series that will, I believe, start to heat up now. Both these two maps have been very, very solid between these two squads but it is the Thieves who walked away as the winners and they have just about edged it in both of these first two maps. On well, maps three and four, maybe tell a slightly different story. The sub will be feeling confident that the reverse sweep is still on the card. Yeah, they certainly will, and they're looking to lock this one in. It will be surprising if our Major One champions go out this early, but we'll have to find out what happens. You talked about the control during the break and the statistics do paint a pretty picture. They do, for the subliners at least, anyway. You know, you look towards them and they are the number one attacking team in the game, the number two defensive team in the game when it does come down to hotel control. Yeah, I'm gonna have a re little reload, but it's something to talk about as well. But the fact that we do see those statistics coming up on the bottom left of your screen, still for the LA Thieves, they are the team who let go of the least amount of ticks. So those defensive stats for the side of Sublanders may well tell the story, but Thieves are no joke either. So it's an interesting one when we will get there. Both these two teams well versed on this one. But if you are Sublanders, you're still happy with this pick. It is both of these two teams' favorite control map. That's the kind of the crazy thing. When you've got a map that both teams really enjoy, it just feels like they're saying, hey, all right, let's just go for it. Let's find out who's better on the day, who can really make it move. And New York, They've not had what they would call a comfortable tournament. Obviously, travel issues on the first day, losing to Minnesota. And now moving forward, the expectations were so high for them coming into this one. Their qualifiers, they look good. They had a few wobbles, but they still looked like the Titans coming into the major. To be in this position, to be looking down the barrel of going out top eight and down two to zero in the series is not something I think anyone predicted. They wouldn't have expected themselves to be here either. Hey, to tell you guys at home in the venue, uh, it is going to be third time's the charm. We're having a little reload in, but let's talk about it. I think you're very, very right. Both these teams happy to square up and sort of say, look, we'd rather just play our best map when it comes down to control, which usually means we get a good game. <laughs> when we get there, of course. Yeah, it's, get one of, it's one of those ones where, obviously, if you're feeling comfortable on a map, we should see a little bit of back and forth between the two. The, the thing for me is, if you're LA Thieves, you're feeling very confident right now. Not only did you win the hard point, you won the S&D. They've both been very, very close, but you've come out on top when it matters. You've only got to do that one more time. Easier said than done. <laughs> when it does come down to a game against a team like the Subliners, I think we have to head back towards Raleigh, I, and even head back all the way towards the beginning of the year. They looked horrible the first two games that we've seen them, and yet they went on to win Raleigh. So I will never ever count out the sublines. They certainly won't. Well, while we're waiting for map number three, we can cast our minds back and take a look at map number one and exactly how that ended. Here's our scuff play of the game. And it's been a huge ending to the hard point. One that I'm sure many people have already rewatched on. Was a hell of a game back and forth the comeback from thieves look to be dead in the water initially when we see this break come through from subliners and then the spawn starts coming in over towards kitchen there they get the info subliners and are they ready for it the answer is no skies gets forced in the kitchen then the push comes in through carpets and skies is like oh you're all dead as am i 
break comes through from Thieves as clean as you like. It's only Kenny who gets traded. Oh, sorry, Envoy who gets traded. And from there, it is very much just hold on to the hill. What a map number one it was. Between these two squads, map number two wasn't too bad either. No, but the diff I mean, the difference between these two teams, especially think about this. If New York were to go out here, hypothetically, with how close it's been, pro players often say, I'd rather get blown out than just have a very close game. And New York, just tiny decisions could have made a difference for them. Yeah, it's those small little moments. Two rounds of social destroy, four points in the hard point. But that can be the difference. You know, even when you are a team like Subline is dropping into that loser's bracket, it's not a game you expect to have in round number two, though, is it? Going up against the Thieves. Things never easy here in the CDL. But hopefully this time around, we do get to load into hotel control. It's getting a little bit warm in the venue, Bryce. I think I might have to take my jacket off. This one's going to heat up. I feel it. <laughs> I do actually need to take it. I'm absolutely boiling. It's the opposite of what it is outside. Uh, Got to keep the heaters on and keep the people alive because it is cold in Boston. But I can confirm this lobby is ready and so are we. One more time into the control and on board with Hydra. Just a reminder, New York Sublens is number one defensive team in the league, the number two attacking team in the league. And here we go, initial kills falling over towards Subliners. Thieves have fallen into the trap of going for those trades in mid-map. Subliners in a brilliant position over towards me already. Already that first tick is going to be in. I think the Priest is on it. There we go. Eventually the first tick goes through as well. Priest stays alive, eventually gets taken down. Skies, last one on the live here. And the question for Thieves will be just how many players are alive around this point? And Hydra does a great job here. He actually holds down mid-map, so the rest of the Thieves can't reinforce from this side. They all have to push through the bar. And now Skies ready and waiting. Guns up, Octane gets him. Hydra will find a kill of his own. Attack can hard. This man could do it with anything, but he ain't gonna find that. It's a nice break back from the side of Thieves. And Subline is a nice start. Biggest benefit here for the subliners is with those two ticks, they have the option of pulling thieves around the map because they always have to be careful of B now. They can't really afford to let it go. This guy is causing a problem with himself, trying to get out of there. It's not going to work out. Thieves have found a way back in over towards A, but I think you're right. You have to respect the fact that you only have one more tick over towards B. And immediately you can see, as you called it, thieves have got to answer the call over towards B. It's going all the way up to subliners, though. Can Draza do anything about it here? Shots into Hydra, need some reinforcements. I think they've choked it. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. They didn't get it by the tiniest of margins. Thieves did not leave it too late. They cannot allow Skies to get onto it. And oh, Skies he's... goes down. Octane with a long range shot. And now he has to hold the cross. It is millimeters there for New York to try and get through. But LA Thieves are holding the line. And this is only 23 seconds to go now. I think Subliners thought they had it locked. And all of a sudden, they have no map control. They don't have B. It's a big hold so far from Thieves. Can they lock down it? Well, it looks like the Subliners are going for it. They're going to try and get the easy A. And they've got the bodies in there to begin with. The clock has stopped. And he's going to go oh! for it. <laughs> the hit fire is just enough. But they're stretching. This is the problem. Thieves have to defend everywhere at once. B is ticking through, Octane is here, Kismet guns him, and I think that's B gone. It may well be gone, Kismet now, here to answer. Oh, again. And Kenny will find it. A ticks coming in, but look at the lives, let's pay attention to this. Subline is only with seven, Thieves with ten. They're happy to go for trades, a big gunfight going over towards the back end of the map, and that's going to help to even things up. Eight now for Thieves, seven for Subliners, as they slowly tick towards A. Thieves are starting to get themselves bedded in over towards Bedroom. The trenches are dug, and they are ready and waiting for the Subliners to try and find a break. Nobody can make a mistake, nobody can blink, and they can barely breathe already. Subliners find the first, they find the second, they die one to the oh. point with the third, and LA Thieves have melted away. There's no resistance here anymore. They have to find a few kills. Kismet gets Straza as well, and that is done and dusted. New York lock in round number one. And that must be six or seven kills off the bounce for Subliners towards the end. We didn't see an answer, and it was actually about a three or four kill lead for the side of Thieves. Even any of those traded puts you in a beneficial situation. But they can't get it done. Subliners clutch up where they need to, and the attacking round goes over towards them. Let's have a look. So, yeah, okay, so an eighth kill spree in the end from Subliners. I don't think Priester actually died throughout that either. So that's what clutches up for them. Hydra, he loves Hotel. 11 and 5 out of him. Really, really good start for the side of the Subliners. Yeah, it was always going to be an issue for the Thieves once they let their two ticks go on a feed that early. They almost held it, but almost is not holding. 
Hydra gets that first blood as well here. Draza looking to move forward with his teammates. Maybe they can do the same thing here as well. And that initial break, once again over towards this attacking team, just far too easily. Hydra that will find a break over towards him, and that's something that Thieves could not do in the previous iteration of a defensive line coming up. But the kill's starting to fall in over towards the site, but it's only slowly ticking. Look at him. Kenny is nose. There's a player on the flank. He knows Hydra hasn't been found. They called this out. There he is. He's going to see him in the last few seconds. Draza comes to back him up as well. Hydra trying to get away with his life. Eventually going to go down, but it has distracted Thieves just enough. Kenny Yorker trying to find something here desperately, but Octane finds two pressure oh. falls as well. Octane has no right to win that one in midair. And Hydra, though, jumps into the point. Is he the savior they need? Not quite. Not quite. It's Octane getting the job done in the kill feed, but Kenny did such a good job. It stayed alive, but who's watching this side? The push is going to come in. Can Sky Smite the gunfight? No, he cannot. Be secured down for the side of Thieves, and they're making their way over towards it. Already there is one player in, but it's Draza and he's alone. He finds the first gunfight as well and tries to get out of there. Not able to hold anything out as well. And you can see the pressure coming in from Hydra. He tries to make the kitchen cut, but they are wise to it. Kenny now staying alive. The team's trying to set up a bit of a pinch, and Kenny is going to be an issue here. The rest of the sub is you have to find something through the front door, because here comes Kenny. Envoy will find one on his own, but Priester does a great job of surviving. He's the only one left for sub -liners. It's a clean break. These are in. They've got two on the point. Are they going to commit any more here? They're watching Kitchen. They're watching the flank as well. They've got the long corridor as well. That third tick is coming through, and Envoy jumps out and finds two. I think you've got a team kill with it as well, but it's going to be locked in. Thieves have found this. Surely Priester tries to make the hero play, and it's just not going to be enough. And LA Thieves fire right back. Answering back crucially as well with somewhat of a decisive attacking round. What are you laughing at? Come on, tell me. I said team kill, I meant team shot. <laughs> Same thing. Same thing. That is why he managed to get those bullets that were ricocheting around that corridor. And Envoy finds the two of them as well. But both teams really looking for that early B push. It's making the difference for them. Both teams were successful B pushes on the attack. You're finding those initial kills, and honestly, Subliners did a good job at finding a retake, at finding a flank. But it was just shut down after shut down after shut down from Octane. Look, this spread through mid map, though, not much presence over towards B. Subliners just going for the kills, going for map presence. Hydra's going to break things open over towards A. And now the question is for Thieves, which way do you go? The rest of the subliners have converted themselves over towards B. The flank is in from Hydra. He's locking this down, but they've got no info on the Thieves players. And that first take for New York is going through. And they've got to dig all these players out in every single direction. Kenny finds one. Octane finds a second. Kenny finds a second. And, and that's it. That was broken way easier than I thought it would be. I mean, someone has somewhat fumbled that. They have bedroom control, but Kenny can just find two kills like that. Makes it very, very easy for the side of Thieves to clear them out. Five lives lost to peace. Make that six now for the subline. There's good hold now from Thieves after an initial scare. And now for subliners, what's the plan? You really worked B off that initial good break. You didn't get it this time around. A couple of kills going over towards A. Skies may well be dealt with here and will be, but the damage is being done over towards the other side of the map. Octane filling himself there, always wins that second gunfight, but right now New York just happy to be into A, trying to stop the clock here as well, but they've got to deal with Envoy. Priest is still alive in the point, and Envoy's looking for him, but he knows it's not an easy kill either. Been a purchase here for the side of Thieves. Some control, Kenny against Kismet, and he finds it. Kenny has not been putting up huge numbers for his team in this series, but he's just creeping up with so many important kills. Now it has to be a time, not on the side of the New York subline as they gotta go. Hydra finds his way through here as well, but Kenny keeps making kills. A two-piece for him, they have to deal with him at the same time. LA Thieves has still got Octane over towards B just in case. They may let this one go. I think if they maybe find a kill or two there, Draza doesn't fall, they have a look at it. Octane, still enthused about the idea. Can they pin them in? They cannot. New York subliners will extend that time and find three kills on top of it as well. You can see Draza immediately makes the push over towards bedroom side. He will continue to be a nuisance because subliners have pushed this way. Thieves spawning close and get themselves set up. I think Kenny just got a little bit of bad timing. He doesn't know already that Preach is going to be behind. It should be an easy pinch for him in the end. And there he goes by Kenny. Him and Skies combining beautifully. And it's all pressure. Hydra calling in the crews here. He's trying to crack this. It's in and it finds nothing. Thieves very much entrenched within towards bedroom. 
V now ticking out. Envoy will find the kill onto Hydra. Still, the positioning from Thieves is not too bad. Can they find the kills? The answer is yes. Octane will take down Priester. The shots are in. They're back on down. And now we get that weird skewed map where neither team really has control of their side of the map. And it's all about the clutch kills when they do come on through. Skies will be an issue yet. Yeah. Oh no. Maybe you want Octane will fight, but Octane will fight too! Hydra gets good enough the map and Thieves are looking good for the defense. Octane keeps winning those gunfights. Certainly feeling himself, but last roll of the dice here for New York. Have to find something, have to find a kill already. Players dropping for them. Priester, can he be the hero they need? Look for Octane, but Octane throws a shoulder. Eventually he's gonna go down, but not for the second. And with time ticking away, Skies will just have to sprint into this and hope he gets there in time. Has to stop the clock and doesn't! Down he goes. Thieves hold the defense. One more control round, and they put New York subliners out of this major. And it's three to zero at that if they can manage to do it. But there's a lot of control to go. Big wins coming in from Drazer and Co. And he was the guy that was left over towards B after A was left. Finds that kill to stop the player rotating around nice and easily. Gets bedroom control. Finds that control to then let the rest of his team get in there and lock things down. Subliners really struggling here. Major one champions in threat of going out on day number two. The Thieves are just finding the kills where they need to right now. And can they find them on the opening brick here? It's a big first kill by Prince. It slows everything down from them as well. Hydra's gonna be low, but instantly gunned. You see making a big move here already though. Will be LA Thieves and not gonna be a turn and burn. Might go for the A here. They have the numbers over towards it. Yeah, a little bit of purchase. Get themselves moving. And Envoy, 22 and 15. Matching Hydra so far, if not bettering them. The rest of the team doing their job in and around the site as well as he just tries to push them back. Kenny will fall. Still players on over towards A from the side of Thieves, but they're going to have to do some defensive work themselves. Octane feeling a little bit isolated here, but eventually we'll win the gunfight. Second tick coming in pretty rapidly. LA Thieves still holding this on. New York may give this up as well. Look how far away they are. And with that final kill going through, I don't think they're gonna make any more pressure. What well, they might do is Hydra might try and flank and find a kill, but nothing there. And this comes down to a B push. This big fight actually just went on. Priester was trying to push out the bedroom side. And now all of a sudden, Envoy is there with the squad. No presence over towards bedroom from the subliners. They're gonna have to fight their way out of their spawn here. Keep an eye on Kismet. Can he be the one? Hydra's not gonna be here. This Kenny will find a kill. There's a lot of pressure here from the thieves. They found two Priester. That's huge onto Octane. Find as well. Kenny goes for the tower with his teammate and he takes down Skies. They're in the point. Two of them are ready. They have the control. Priester has to go. He finds the first on the Kenny. They have two into the point as well. The second tick is slow. Is it slow enough? Pinch starting to develop here from the side of Subliners. Oh, and Skies will find Draza as well. You could see it developing in the mid map there as they started to push, get couch control, and they find the kills. A momentary scare from the side of Subliners. And now a small amount of respite where they can get themselves set up this time. But the problem is they haven't been able to get too much purchase over towards that bedroom side. Hydra can't find a kill, but Kismet and Priest can. They just about hold on. And every single Subliners fan in attendance just breathes for the first time in about a minute. Kismet pushing it out, they're feeling it as well. They are trying to put out things on the back foot. Kismet firing, throwing everything at it, eventually will fall. But the rest of the Subliners still have position. Hydra is going to be a problem. He's going to be a problem, but he's not in the position he really wants to be in. He can stop them pushing over towards the far side, but they need his teammates to do the job over towards bedroom. And all of a sudden, they're already dead. Priester watching them cross. Kismet is here as well. They've got to hold it down. Priester finding two is massive. Stays alive and allows Kismet to stay alive too. Oh, they 2v4'd LA Thieves for that hold. The Thieves thought they had the opportunity. 44 seconds left on the clock. Hydra holding already, and he plays patient, gets the kill, gets away, eventually taken down by Draza. But this is all time. They are bleeding the Thieves over this map. And now the moment for Thieves. Not much time on the board. You can formulate one more strong attack. Skies will get out just about with these left. And Kenny's going to be found towards the back. Kismet will find one at the front. It's looking good to send us for round number five. Oh my god, Hydra. And they've got it, I think, maybe just as well. Keep an eye, Kismet is gonna be in the position to shut down any push coming through, and he does. Octane will fall, the subliners will hold. And realistically, the LA Thieves have a few seconds. They have a slight window. They have to make a kill, they have to move forward as well. Skies, left, right, Priester, Hydra just locking it all down. And it's a wipe to end it. We're going to a round five on control.
Because of course we are. <laughs> a team on an attack and a defensive side each, so not necessarily a preference, although defense will always be it. Really good stuff from both these two teams. Subliners and Thieves tied up now. And while we wait for this final round to go on, just a little bit of an announcement. It is going to be incredibly cold tomorrow. Please do not wait outside the venue. Don't worry about getting a seat. Just don't get here early. We don't want anyone to be in any sort of issue. But with that said, let's get into this final round. This could be the last round for Subliners or the start of something beautiful. Hydra may well be 28 to 25, but he started this game off so, so hot and he has slowed down. Can he be the guy though? So New York Subliners making the safe play this time to push over towards A. It's a clean push over towards A as well. They're starting to lock this one in. Thieves not necessarily there to answer, but a good start for Subliners. Well, they've given it up already. They're going to try and push this one through as well, and they've done it. Hydra's on a five streak. He's moving. And already LA Thieves are feeling the pressure. Only one man in a position. It's going to be Kenny. Kenny be everything he already finds the first kill. And that is going to force the New York Subliners to split their vision. Looking for it as Kenny will find the second. He wants a little bit more. His teammates are desperately trying to get here to reinforce. And the problem is there for the side of Subliners. They find three kills across the map and it dangles the carrot almost to go over towards B. Kenny does a great job to slow that down. Now Subliners with 45 seconds or so to go. I've got to concentrate their tournament lives here over towards it. And on boy, looking for one, oh. for two with the raid as well, staying alive. Sky trying to get back into it, finds Kismet, on boy, on a four streak, dead silence popped and we're off to the races. Kenny's gonna hold these kills down, Priestek can't make it. And New York Subliners in somewhat of a panic here are committing over towards B. They're starting to line up for Kenny, the shots are in, he's still on a four spree. Surviving, but the pressure is there from Subliners over towards B. They're getting time on the board and they stopped the time for the 31 seconds that are left. Here comes on boy, he's the hot hand at the moment, fires Kismet as well. And nobody protecting this, nobody in a position for it either here. And he comes in from Hydra, he leads something, he finds nothing. 24 seconds. They have to move, they have stopped the clock, but for how long? Hydra will find Kenny. He may well need to find a little bit more. He's found two though. And Envoy is here to try and shut down the French Phenom. He's trying to get across for the rest of his team. Because of that door opened, walked through it over towards Zane. And this is what they're going to get here. Streak wait a minute, Streak wait a in. minute. We can hear it in the sky. Oh, there it is. One. And that's going to force them off. They're going to have to now get back into position, but Thieves are already here. And Octane trying to hold it down as well, but it's enough from New York. Everybody wipe the sweat off your brow. On boys on a seven streak. Time still remaining. Time ticking away. 15 lines for LA. 11 for New York. A major one champions. 2-0 down in the series, but it takes one good break, one moment to find yourselves back into it. That's all it takes over towards B. One moment of a misstep from the side of Thieves, but so far, so good. Spawns are there, but look, the pinch being developed by Subliners. They have 40 seconds, but not a lot of lives to play with Hydra. He's been gunned by Kenny, who has just seemed to be there in every single stage that they've needed him. Envoy at a 7 spree, make it an 8. Thieves are feeling good. They're 30 seconds away from the win. And New York are going to be relying on Skies. He's the only player in a position to do damage. The Thieves has taken bedroom control. But the time is against them. Priest defines the first on the draws up. New York looking to spring into action. Kenny will find Priest, but waits patiently for Hydra as well. Oh! <laughs> Kenny makes the play, and that may be the dagger. That may be everything that wrote. Octane finds the last sky. He tries to make a hero play, but with five seconds left to go, they sprint, they run, but the only place they go is out of the major. LA Thieves move forward and take down. And our major one champions go out with a bit of a whimper. A three to zero series probably doesn't tell the story of what was a close map one, two, and three. But the LA Thieves, they show up when they need to. They show they are here to play in a big game from Envoy. It was an eight spree towards the end that got the job done. He locks it in, so do the Thieves. A 3-0 win to end the day here over in Boston. And that is a statement victory from the LA Thieves. And as we said before, a 3-0, but in name only. Every single map was down to the wire. 
But it has been said before, it doesn't matter how you win, winning is winning. And New York will not feel any better about it. The fact they had some close match, they are out. They are going home. We will have a new champion for Major 2. Four points and a half points, two rounds in the search of destroy, and a round of the control is the only thing that makes a difference in this series. The stat line is hard to really comprehend from across every single player because everyone on Thieves did their job when they needed to. Kenny, for me, was... He didn't necessarily put up ridiculous numbers every single game, but how many times did we see these clutch two pieces just coming in here and there from Kenny in maps one, two, and three? Big game from him, and everybody from the Thieves did their job. A fantastic series from then to close out the day. It certainly does. Well, we're going to send it over to the stage, and I believe Blaze is the long boy. Thank you so much, Bryson Tun. One more time for the day. Give it up for the LA Thieves as they lock in another win. Boy, when it comes down to this squad over here that you, the New York team, if it wasn't for them last event, you guys may have went on a three-peat, okay? Yeah. How does it feel taking them out and moving on in the tournament? It feels good. I mean, we've been matching really well with them in scrims, so we kind of knew what to expect going into the series. Maybe not a 3-0, but we knew the match that was good for us. Nice, nice. Now, talk to me about your teammates, okay? Octane, we got uh, Draza over there as well as Kenny. How did those boys get it done today, okay? How did they make your job so much easier? Because you, you were frying out there. Yeah, I mean, we just came with a new game plan today in S&D, which I think was the biggest thing of this series. We got a lot more aggressive on teams, took more chows. Uh, Sam has been absolutely frying today as well. Zach's been getting in the mix, and that's ultimately what got us the dub. All right, nice, nice. Now, I know you from L.A. Is this, is this cold air affecting you any, any of uh, A little here? bit. I mean, I'm originally from Chicago, so it, Same here. it, it, gets, a, it gets a little cold up there, but... Um, yeah, not a fan of the cold. Yeah, not either. Even from Chicago, this cold ain't prepared me whatsoever. Now, anything you want to say to these fans out here so I can get you going? Thank you guys all for coming out to support. It's a long day. Thank you guys for sticking through, and we'll see you tomorrow. It has been a long day, and that's going to do it for us on the stage. Puck it. Get us home. Thank you so much, Blaze. And give it up one more time for Envoy and the LA Thieves. Closing it out with a perfect day here for LA. Looking like they're back in championship form. And for everyone who's filing out, real quick, safety first. It is four degrees. It is negative Ooh. four, it feels like, with the wind chill. So be careful. Make sure you're reading the right Uber license place as you hop oh, in. But, but let's break down this bracket with where we're at. Allie, that's right. Don't walk. But walk us through this bracket, can you? Because <laughs> we had five matches today. Yeah, it was a lot to get get through maybe a couple of upsets if you count the fact that LA Thieves went perfect on the day and man our bracket's been shaking up the hometown heroes though they push it forward and we'll have to face an LAG tomorrow who's had a rocky start but even on the top side of things I mean this is chaos Shay. it's just the crazy thing is that we have subliners who are our major one champions get eliminated and right. the team who came in second also got eliminated in Seattle surge man obviously we're gonna have a new champion but what happened to both of those squads? This is the most competitive I have seen Call of Duty. Anyone that enters has a chance. Let's take a look, though, at how we got here. We got to start at the very beginning of this day because we were in the venue at 10. The players were right there with us warming up. And then we kicked off the show at 1.30 with our opening match. The subliners were the first ones to take the stage. The reason they're here, they lost to the Rocker. They had to go up against the London Royal Ravens. And while the Ravens looked decent in search and destroy, this was all subliners when it came to the response. Yeah, and unfortunately for a side of subliners, I think that map number two, that SD, that 6-2 lost to London, kind of spelled out how the rest of their day was going to go as yeah. well. But London Royal Ravens, you start looking at them and getting a little bit was stressed out here. I mean, both the respawn losses, the 3-1 dominance loss over in that control. London Royal Ravens, they've got to start figuring stuff out quick because this is now a qualifier and an event that you weren't able to pull out any W. Yeah, you're looking uh, not in the best spot if you're trying to make it to champs. Remember, you got to be in our top eight in the CDL points at the end of the season to make it there. Let's take a look, though, at what went down with the hometown squad. This one a little controversial at the end. Cruise Missile taking out two members of Seattle, but we got to give Breach their flowers, right? They show up both matches in front of their fans, and this time they're able to pull off the ever-important dub. Yeah, Boston Breach, they just came out swinging today. Obviously, in the opening hard point, it was Mac finding three-piece after three-piece. When that guy goes off, Seattle usually find a lot of success. But then you get to the game two, where Seattle have been struggling so far throughout stage one and stage two. Their S&D has been abysmal. Boston Breach do a great job of taking that one. And in the control, I thought that this was the turning point in the series. The fact that Boston were able
able to clutch up in such a crucial, crucial attacking round. When you start off on defense, you put yourself up 2-0, great, because now you got defense going into the round number three, clean 3-0 there. And then obviously, we all know what happened in this final hard point. Got to feel for Matt, because that's truly unfortunate. Really rough finish here, takes out himself in accuracy. That was one of the mini cruise missiles that came down that game, but it all the way came down to the wire here, Landon. And as we take a look at these final moments, you just got some clutch plays coming in at the right time. Taking a look at the LA Thieves going up against the Mutineers. Thieves look like they are back in form. Mutineers may want to go back to the drawing board after this event. Maybe make some major changes, not only with their map picks, but maybe their roster. Yeah, that's a very good point. I mean, we came into it wondering how are they going to play with Dave Patty? Two matches online. They come into this game with some high hopes, with some high spirits, but they just ran into a very dominant Thieves team, as we would see in this series. And obviously, the last one there versus New York. The biggest thing for me was this search and destroy, as a matter of fact. This is one that Florida was flawless on. They had yet yep. to lose it. There were so many different statistics that were highlighting Havoc, highlighting their first bloods, all of that, and none of it worked out. And I think, to be honest with you, thinking forward about this Thieves roster, Search Destroy, if they have ironed that up, as Envoy talked about it in that interview, they're going to be in a good position, Pucket. The best match of the day, though, belongs to the LA Gorillas versus Vegas Legion. Clayster putting on a show in his 89th tournament. The <laughs> man looks like he's still rocking a ponytail and glasses on the main stage. No ponytail, still dropping 30 bombs, but it wasn't enough. The gorillas steal that game five in Search and Destroy Alley. Yeah, our only game five on the day, actually. We had so many yesterday. We released Jew for one today, and I wouldn't have had it anywhere else than Vegas versus LAG. Depending which side of the coin you flip it, Vegas, it is another heartbreaking loss for them. They really pushed it to the limit when it came to that first opening hard point, and they took that map too like they were supposed to, but unfortunately could not ice up in that game number five. On the flip side, LAG, it it was a flawless 6 to win on the Silo. We saw what Exceed's capable of, I feel like, in that game five. He yeah. might have been a player that we've overlooked a little bit since being added into this new squad. It's been a lot of focus on Joe Deceives and Orsides getting his revenge and Assault getting plugged back into the Pro League. So I'm glad Exceed got his spotlight today. Heck yeah, Exceed clutching up after Assault gave them some life. Exceed was the one who sealed the deal and sent Legion packing with a 9 through 12 seed. So the Gorillas continue on to tomorrow and we'll see just how deep of a threat they'll be at this event. Taking a look at the big schedule tomorrow, Jay, let me know what are you most fired up for? We got the hometown <laughs> squad against the Gorillas, a banger to open things up. Yeah, that one's going to be a banger, but my sole focus is Toronto Ultra going up against Atlanta Face. We know the history between those two teams all throughout, ever since CDL history. It's always been these two guys that are always going to face off, so I know that that's going to be a banger. Scrappy's going to be ready to run his mouth in that one, and I am here for Optic Texas versus Rocker at the top of our winner's bracket as well at 4.30, and then we've got two more rounds of elimination as we say goodbye to a few more teams. Thank you all for tuning in for a Super Friday here from Boston, an epic day two of just four coming at you, and my guy Blaze is killing it, as well as the in-house DJ. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you tomorrow. Pass the chow to kids. Daddy's hungry. Yo. Seriously, I'm starving. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> you feel me? I'm feeling charged up. I'm a battery on full percentage. I got the green light. Keeping my